Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Dr. Dustin Portella, 208 Skin Doc, and today we're going to talk about some drama that has happened in the skincare world. We're going to talk about who that involves, why it's even a thing to begin with, and then stick around till the end because you're going to get my thoughts on this subject. Spoiler alert, we're going to be talking about blue light once again. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get going with this video, I just want to remind you guys, one of the best ways you can support the channel is to check out 208 Skin, my own skincare line at 208skn.com. I definitely don't want you to feel obligated to anything, but please go check it out on the website. And if you're in need of skincare, go ahead and try one of those products. If you have questions about them, let me know. You guys can always text me. My text number is in my bio on all social media. So with that said, let's get to the rest of the video. You guys may remember that a few videos back, I talked about Blue Light in relationship to Valkyrie and her teaming up with a brand called Reflect Skincare. And the idea behind Reflect Skincare was to protect our skin against blue light, damage from the screens. We also call this high energy visible light. And we talked about why this brand failed almost before they got started and why Valkyrie backed out of that deal. And a little bit about my thoughts about Blue Light then. Now, after some time has gone by, we've got a new brand popping up called Screen Break. And this is something that has been launched by Item Beauty. And it's really about who they're launching it with that has created a lot of buzz. Many of you may know who Addison Rae is. Addison Rae is one of the biggest TikTokers on planet Earth. She's got almost 87 million followers on TikTok and of course tons on Instagram and probably anywhere else she has a social media profile. So she teamed up with Item Beauty or they teamed up with her, however it went down, to launch this new product called Screen Break. Screen Break is a mist that you spray on the skin and the idea behind it is that it is an anti-pollution and blue light protection mist that's going to help protect your skin from all of the screen time that we have. After the sudden rise and fall of Reflect Skin Care, blue light has kind of got a bad name in skincare. The reason again for Reflect's failure is they did not reveal any of their studies, any of their data with Valcre. And so they just published a website, they had all the products ready to go, and then Valcre started to push for, hey, where's the data, where's the science, I need to see it. And they held all that data back, if it even existed in the first place, in order to remain proprietary so that nobody else could steal their secret formulas. So Valkyrie backed out of the deal because essentially she felt like she was pitching a product that had no data available behind it. Whether that data existed or not didn't really matter. Nobody else could evaluate it or scrutinize the data to determine if the products were actually effective or solve the problem that they claimed to solve. And that just set the stage for where we're at now with Item Beauty releasing Screen Break and Addison Rae has got a lot of blowback over this one. What I wanna do is show you the promotional video that was released with Addison and then we're gonna to talk about some of the claims that are made in here. Meet Screen Break, Item Beauty's blue light and anti-pollution face mist. I'm on my phone and my laptop a lot, and if we you all don't are. Know, the blue light that comes from devices can actually cause skin fatigue. Skin fatigue? What's that? So this is clinically proven to help protect your skin from those artificial blue lights. Clinically proven is going to be something we talk it's also about. Also great because it helps hydrate and tone, refresher feeling skin. That might be legit there. I keep it with me all throughout the day and spray it anytime I need a screen break. Very clever. Okay, so that's the little promotional video that was released and they make a few claims in there. And I personally, you know, obviously don't know Addison and I have nothing against her, but it is worth noting that she's caught a lot of backlash for launching this product. First off, she says that the blue light on our phones can cause something called skin fatigue. I don't know what skin fatigue is and I'm a dermatologist. That's not a term that is clinical in any way. That's not a diagnosis that we give patients. Skin fatigue is a made up term strictly for marketing in this instance. So skin fatigue is not real. It's only for marketing. Don't purchase this product because you think you have some new diagnosis that a marketing agency came up with. Now that we've debunked this skin fatigue thing, then we talk again about blue light a little bit. Now, blue light is generally not something that most people have to worry about. 
Blue light can, in some people who are really sensitive to pigmentation problems, can activate a receptor inside our skin cells that can start a process to increase pigmentation. But unless you're highly sensitive and have a condition like melasma, that's probably not something that you need to worry about, and you're certainly not going to get enough exposure from your screens in order to trigger that process for the average person. So again, the amount of blue light that comes from our screens is pretty negligible overall. The other claim that's made in this promotional video is that it can help to hydrate and refresh our skin. And I don't think that's that much of a stretch. You're spraying on a mist on the skin, it's certainly going to hydrate unless it's filled with denatured alcohol, but this one isn't. It actually has some hydrating ingredients like glycerin. It does have niacinamide, which can be anti-inflammatory and can help to refresh the skin. Niacinamide has really been a popular ingredient and many companies are now including that in their formulations. So there's a couple of good ingredients there. We also have dandelion root extract, which has some antioxidant properties. So that's not an awful thing. And then there's also ashwagandha root extract, which also can be somewhat helpful. So I don't think the ingredient list overall is a problem in this particular product. If you want to use this as a facial toner or an essence, something like that, I don't think you're going to go wrong with it. Overall, we're looking at about $20 for this product. For your $20, you're going to get a 3.2 ounce size, which, you know, is pretty decent overall. Now, here's another problem I have with this product, though, is they talk about clinically proven. I looked at Item Beauty's website, I looked at Sephora, and I can find no actual clinical data anywhere. We don't have any information about how this was clinically studied. Was this product actually studied among participants? So the way that I might imagine that happening is that they gave this product to maybe 20 people. Most of these clinical studies by over-the-counter skincare companies are really are not big. They don't invest a ton of money into it, but they'll have the person use that for a short period of time, maybe anywhere between two and eight weeks, and then give them a questionnaire to fill out at different points during that evaluation period where they're going to talk about how hydrated their skin felt, if it felt renewed or that their pores were tighter or that they had more radiance or something like that and they'll score that before they start using the product versus during use or at the end of the study period. It's really uncommon that an over-the-counter skincare company is going to do anything that looks anything like a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. It's just generally too expensive and not really necessary for over-the-counter type stuff. Now the thing that they're probably basing their claim on is the ingredients. And this is strictly my guess, my speculation, because I don't see any actual clinical data from Item Beauty um, or from anything that I found online. So rather than a study where they were using this particular product, they're probably relying on past studies that have been published about individual ingredients like niacinamide or dandelion root extract or glycerin and basing their clinical improvement on studies that have shown that glycerin hydrates the skin. Niacinamide has anti-inflammatory properties. I don't know what any of the percentages of these ingredients are. Overall, there's not a lot of information online. So I highly doubt, and again, it's strictly my opinion, my speculation, I don't think that this product has actually been clinically studied in its final form. I think they're probably referencing ingredients. I could be wrong about that and would love for it if the company wanted to correct me on that. Um, but again, my speculation only, and overall, I think if you want to use this particular product as an essence, that's totally fine. But again, do you need blue light protection? I, I don't think the average person needs to go out of their way to find a product that's specifically made for blue light protection. The amount of blue light you get on your phones is pretty negligible. If you're concerned about blue light and you're not wearing a sunscreen, again, this doesn't have any SPF in it. Uh, you really need sunscreen because the most amount of blue light or high energy visible light that you're going to get is going to come from the sun and your daily sun exposure. Even if we did need specific blue light protection, there's no quantifiable way to know what that is at this point. There's no standardized method for blue light protection the way that we have SPF or sun protective factor to rate our sunscreens. And of course, I recommend a 30 SPF or higher as far as a sunscreen goes. There's no method like that for blue light protection. So we don't know if this product actually does a good job in protecting from blue light versus any other product that might have blue light claims because it's hard to compare apples to apples. So in closing, my thoughts are 
Addison Ray is getting some pushback from this and I think it's somewhat deserved. I think she's a nice person and I don't have anything against her personally, but hitching her wagon to this particular product, I think she should be expected to have a little bit of blowback, especially on the heels of the Reflect skincare debacle that happened with Valkyrie. Second, there's no standard for evaluating blue light protection, and this product makes some claims and even invents some terms like skin fatigue that really can't be backed up. Next, they have some decent ingredients in this, and if you like to use an essence to hydrate your skin before a moisturizer, I think that this is a fine product. I think it's low risk for causing sensitivity, and if you are a big fan of Addison Ray or you particularly want you know, something that has niacinamide and glycerin, there's no problem with you purchasing this particular thing. You can get it at Sephora. You can get it from itembeauty.com. So you can check it out there. I don't personally endorse it because I think there's problems with the types of claims that they're making in trying to get you to come up with a new thing to be concerned about with your skin, this skin fatigue, uh, in order to purchase a product. So if you're interested in getting some type of hydrating essence or toner, there's a lot of others on the market now. There is even a new uh, toner available from CeraVe that's got hyaluronic acid in it um, that I've used. It's much you know, less expensive, so that one's a reasonable consideration as well. Let me know if you guys have heard about this new product and what are your thoughts about Item Beauty's new screen break product and Addison Rae's endorsement on this particular campaign. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. So let me know down in the comments below, like this video and share it with somebody else who might be interested in skincare or all things dermatology related. I appreciate you guys' support of the channel and I will see you back next time.